Catch a link here in Military Academy. Course, Human Bullshit 301. Prerequisites, Being Non-Human, Human Bullshit 101, Human Bullshit 201. Instructor, Commander Lickax stood in the side room with the largest hall the Academy had to offer as she waited for students to take their seats on the first class of their final course before graduation. It was truly a special time. Soon she'd never have to see these idiots again. You ready? She said, turning away from the viewport in the side door to the lecture hall. I hate doing this, Lecac, said the tall human in the room with her. It's weird you teach a class about us. Your wife is a xenobiologist, Lecac replied. That's different and you know it. Kara studies all non-Earth-based life, not one specific sentient species. You'll get over it, Lecac said. Anyways, you owe me. It's degrading. I feel like a monkey in a zoo. She wriggled up and tapped him on the cheek a couple of times. Oh, honey, you are a monkey. Ha ha, you're a riot. Let's get this over with. I'll buy you a banana when we're done, Likak said, heading out the door and onto the stage. By the time Likak made it to the centre of the stage, all the students had shut up, which was good. They were learning, or at a minimum, she'd call the herd. Her class size had shrunk since Human Bullshit 101, but that wasn't unusual. Dealing with humans and their bullshit required a flexible mind and the ability to adapt, and some beings just weren't up to the task. Likak found this absolutely fucking wild, considering the ability to adapt is like the main thing biological life is supposed to be able to do. Like, that's just how evolution works. How do you let down evolution? Well, by not surviving, she supposed. Which begs the question, how do these morons manage to survive long enough to make it to a class in the first place? Greetings, my lovely students. She announced the hall, with what passed for a smile in her species. How are you on this fine morning? Excited to nearly be done with your training? The students stared back at her in silence. She couldn't even make out the rustling of movement that was common for groups this big. Her face dropped to her usual scowl that was universally understood across all species. Damn, I must be losing my touch, she said. I didn't even get Sue bent to fall for it. The small Simparica almost held it together. But the cat could tell they were being with pride on the inside. All right, without further ado, let me introduce you to the former field marshal for the Human Collective Armies, Liam Abathorn, Lickax said, gesturing to the side door. This time she got them. The room erupted with noise as the formerly still and silent students turned and started talking to one another. Lickax had expected this. She intentionally kept the course outlined from the students until this exact point every year. Most of them had never met a human, and if they'd known this entire course was based around interviewing, talking to, and interacting with real-life humans, they would have been too excited to focus on Human Bullshit 101 and 201. Abathor walked out of the side door and onto the stage, doing his stupid keep his hands by his waist while he weighed thing that he did. For being the former leader of one of the most powerful military collectors in existence, it very little in the way of stage presence. Here's how this course is going to work, Likak started. Every week, I will bring in a new human for you all to play with, you will have the class period to ask them questions and chat with them. By the subsequent class, I want a detailed report on the interaction and the impression you got from them. You will also need to research their history, accomplishments and failures before class to see how your impression of them in person does or does not correspond to your impression of them from their records. Abathorn should be familiar enough to all of you that prior research shouldn't be necessary. You may begin questioning. Immediately, every grasping appendage in the hall shot up in the air. The cat picked one at random. Is it true that you killed a Tarantor with your bare hands? Yes, Abathorn replied, hand reflexively moving to his prosthetic leg. Did you really dive into Piranite infested water and pull the crew of a down helicopter out one by one? Yes. Did they really have to hold you back from going in for the pilot because you were collapsing with exhaustion? Well, they definitely held me back from going in again, that much is true. And did you really fly a fire breathing winged lizard into a fortress to save royal air? Abathor looked back to Lekak, who shrugged amused. You know, you really shouldn't believe everything she tells you, he said, turning back to the class. The students were all looking past him where Lekak was standing. She was giving them her famous look. Which I'm now realising is part of the lesson that she's been trying to teach you all along, Abathor continued, slapping his forehead. Damn it, Lekak, don't you ever let up? No, she replied, smiling. The questions continue for the next few hours and she could see that some of the students had already picked up the human bullshit theme for this lesson. No matter how much you know or read about a human, you don't really know them until you've met them. 
It helped that Aberforn was so different from his famous persona. Any last questions? Lecac asked, as the end of the class drew near. Trilly, Lecac's best student, who'd been oddly quiet, raised a hand. How do you know Commander Lecac? Just like that, Lecac was reminded why this unassuming Rubellic Spawn was her best student. In a single question, she'd learned about Aberforn, gained contextual information about why he was here, and learned about Lecac's life before the academy, which, until this moment, she kept out of the classroom. Lecac felt bad for Trilly's future enemy combatants. Aberforn turned to Lecac. I'm clear to discuss classified materials, right? Lecac nodded, slowly. Aberforth turned back to the class. We were joint commanders in repelling the Void Ravik invasion. The room erupted into chaos again. It was as though Aberthorn had told them the sky was falling or FTL was now impossible. He said it so casually like the Void Ravik invasion wasn't the largest and most profound military event in generations. Quiet down, the guy shouted. How come you didn't tell us earlier? One of our three Galactian students asked. Because it has nothing to do with human bullshit. No. Aberthorn said. We're making everything about yourself is some classic human bullshit. So, let's do that. We also learn more about your favourite professor here. I'll answer any question you want. He flashed a shit-eating grin at Likak. Class went an hour longer than usual, which wasn't unusual when Aberthorn was around. He told them all about the Void Ravik invasion and Likak. For Likak's part, she held her dignified pose as Aberthorn made a point to tell embarrassing stories about her. Once the last students filtered out of the hall, she slashed down, taking pressure off her fluid-filled capillaries. They hurt like hell. You should really get that looked at again, Aberthorn said, falling into a chair. And you should really upgrade your prosthetic leg so standing for long periods doesn't hurt, Lecac retorted. A pair of broken toy soldiers, huh? Lecac rolled all eight of her eyes and made a mental note to talk to her class about how humans like to spout pseudo-philosophical bullshit when they get old. Tell me about it, Lecac said instead. Thanks for coming and helping, by the way. I hope you know how much I appreciate it. Although, did you really have to tell her about the fried chicken incident? That wasn't part of the plan. How could I not tell them? Aberthorn said, pulling an outline for the lesson that included everything up to and including the Void Ravik invasion. Do you think they realised we planned the whole thing? They're a good group, but they're not that good. Fair, Aberthorn said. Am I still on the hook for next year? That depends, she replied, getting up. Are you still sober? And if I wasn't, Kara would have told you by now. He said, getting up as well. You know sponsors aren't supposed to blackmail their sponsees. And you weren't supposed to tell my students about the fried chicken incident? Even? Even. They walked out of the hall together. You still owe me a banana.